Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the land security series where we're gonna talk about ways of keeping trespassers off your property. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. That is a joke. Those are my goats. They're not trespassers. It turns out animals can't trespass. So in today's video, guys, we are going to talk about the option of trail cameras. I'm gonna tell you guys the good and the bad of using trail cameras to provide security on your property. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how to use them in both a manner that is efficient as well as help you to catch people stealing your cameras. Trail cameras are good for a couple of things, guys. One, they let you know what kind of animals are on your property and we're headed out right now to go and check a trail camera that has been out for about two weeks now and it is to hopefully see what is on our property. You can see behind me this little road I have created in here. This was actually a nice little bear trail and we came in here with the tractor and the big mower blade and uh, knocked this down even wider. So I made it so an elephant could get through here. But this is where the bears were coming in and out of this place. So we're gonna go and check it. So trail cams are great for seeing predators on your property. Trail cameras are also good for seeing anyone who may be coming onto your property or have committed a crime on your property. They can also prevent crime from being committed on your property because someone sees them and then leaves. So they're a good deterrent, but they will also get stolen because someone's coming in to steal something from you and they see that you now have their picture, well, they might just take your camera so that you don't have their picture anymore. So there's ways around that. I'm gonna show you this, guys, really quick. You can see we got a trail cam right there. That trail cam is facing up the trail we just walked up, so that trail camera is now taking our picture. That trail camera right there is very obvious because it is right in the line of sight of a human being. So a couple of ways to stop someone from being able to steal that. So here's one tip that you can use to protect your trail cameras or catch someone after they have stolen your trail camera is you double up on your trail cameras. You stick one that's a little bit obvious up and then you hide the other one pointing at your trail camera. Um, this works in the woods. If you catch, if you have issues with hunters stealing your trail cameras, you can actually catch people stealing your trail cameras. Most of the time, everyone thinks I got the trail camera. So if you take a trail camera and point it at your other trail camera from a different angle, it usually works out that you can catch people stealing your one camera. Now you gotta hide the second camera. So put it down low, facing up, or put it up high, facing down. I have found that putting trail cameras up high and pointing them down works really well. Most people don't look up when they're walking through the woods. They look ahead and then they look down as to where they're walking. So sticking them up high, you generally never see them. Now the downside of using trail cameras to protect your property. You are going to get a picture of someone who has committed a crime on your property, which means they committed the crime and then you got their picture. So the crime has already taken place. It's not going to stop the crime from happening. Now we used trespassing signs as an example in the last video. That is a, a, a great way to try and keep honest people off of your property. A trail cam is going to only stop a honest person. Uh, a dishonest person is going to steal your trail camera. So if it is for your house or your land, you want to try and hide them better than that. And as you can see, that camouflage right there doesn't work well in this area. So one thing you can do is take your camera, uh, tape off the sensors, tape off your lights, tape off your, um, your screens here, tape them all off and give them a better paint job than this. Now this looks like oak, it's probably oak, right? Mossy oak. So this is oak and I think oak leaves looks like a tree, but over there, it looks gray on a brown and green tree. Yeah, that's not a really great camouflage pattern. So don't be afraid to paint your brand new cameras so that they blend in better. Tips for catching predators, guys. Tips for catching animals. Uh, and then how to set up your trail camera. For one, you do not want to set up your cameras so that they are facing directly into the rising sun and the setting sun. The low light of the sun will actually trigger your cameras and you'll get a bunch of pictures that are washed out. So if you have someone walking by your camera and the sun is directly behind them, you're not gonna be able to see them because it is blinding your camera. 
So be aware of the sun when you are setting your camera and don't set your camera directly into sunlight. Also, when setting your camera, as you can see right there, we have trimmed down a couple of, of the limbs right down there in front of the camera. The reason for that is you can actually see that the wind is moving the wind is moving the branches around it right now, but the branches are all cut above it. So if the wind is blowing in front of your camera, it's gonna sit there and trigger pictures over and over and over. It's going to drain the life of your batteries and it's also going to fill up your SD card, which could prevent you from being able to see what you're trying to see. There are many times that I have gotten hundreds of pictures on an SD card of just a limb or something blowing in front of my camera. So trim your limbs and if you have it down low, trim your grass just a little bit. Now to catch predators, to catch animals, you need a couple of things. One, you need to have a good trigger speed on your camera. All cameras are not created equal. You want a trigger speed. I believe for me, the most important thing that I've found with cameras is trigger speeds. If you have an expensive camera, but the trigger speed is not good, it doesn't really help you out. You want to be able to catch whatever animal comes across in front of the camera, and you want to catch it immediately. So if an animal was to walk broadside across your camera, you want to be able to get a picture of the nose, the head, the body, the tail, and the foot walking away. If your camera has a bad trigger speed and you're not on a burst setting, then you might just get a picture of the face and then that is it. Or you might get a picture of the body, which completely washes out the camera and you don't know it actually stepped right in front of your camera. Now, dealing with animals, many people will go out in the woods and they'll set their cameras up high like that. Why? Because that is convenient when setting up your camera right in front of your face. But that is not where animals are at unless you're hunting moose or elk. So what you want to do is you want to get your camera down low. A uh, bear walk around with their head at about three feet high. Coyotes, cougars, all of those animals are very low. Even deer aren't as tall as some people think they are when they're setting trail cameras up. Now if you can get bear, if you can get coyotes, if you can get deer, you're going to catch elk, you're going to catch bear, and you're going to catch humans. So how cameras operate? Many of these cameras are batteries. They take a bunch of batteries, they take an SD card, and that is how they operate. So how can that go wrong? One, if you leave them out too long, your batteries die, you don't get to see, and it is no longer protecting your property. If you leave it out too long and the SD card fills up, it is no longer protecting your property because it is no longer taking pictures. Some of these cameras come with the ability, most of them now come with the ability to hook up a, a solar pack. You can get a solar pack, put it in there in a battery, run a solar panel up a tree, make sure you're getting sun, put a battery bank on it, and these things will last for as long as the sun continues to charge your battery. Now, places to put your camera. Uh, here we're putting our camera on a trail because we are trying to look at animals coming in here. If you are using your camera to protect your property, you need to think of places that people would come into the property. Now that's not always up the driveway, that's not always to the front door, so you don't want to place cameras in those locations necessarily. But sticking a camera on a road coming into your property will let you know what traffic is in and out of that property, and on the off chance that someone comes in just one time and you happen to get their license plate number, that can actually prove very valuable. This has happened to me in the past where I have gotten a picture of um, a neighbor coming into a property and doing something to another neighbor's property and that neighbor called me to ask if I had gotten anything on the trail camera and I did have a picture of the guy coming in late at night. So on roads in off locations, a place that's covered with brush and trees where someone is not going to want to necessarily look. When you see animal trails going into the woods, you will get hunters to look down that. That is not where you necessarily want to place it because they will look at an ideal spot that animals travel and find your camera. Now coming into your driveway, if you have a gate or something posted there and you want to make it very obvious that you're watching someone, put a camera up behind the gate where they can see it and they know, okay, there's a camera there and now it has my picture. This is an awesome deterrent because that person would then have to jump a gate, maybe climb a tree to get after your camera. So this is a, this is a fantastic way to not only not lose your camera, uh, but let someone know that you've got their picture. Now in that same scenario, I would hide two cameras pointing into the same location or one of my cameras watching my other camera as well as the driveway. So if I've got a camera set right here, I would set a camera back behind it so that I can see if someone comes up and grabs this first camera. 
So you gotta be smart when you guys are putting it up. You gotta be crafty because criminals are wily as well and they are going to be uh, trying to outsmart you as they try to steal your goods. Now, other locations to stick cameras, um, sticking them on trails that maybe someone would use to access your property. So don't just put it right out on the road. If you have a place that's right off of a road and you're worried about people coming into a property, one of the places I like to stick cameras is just beyond a brushy or thick area where someone might have to duck to come through and they're ducking and looking down and as they come up they would get their picture taken and then continue on so they're not going to come up come out and look directly up at a camera or look up right away and see your camera just off so patterning human behavior is a great way to trick people into not seeing your camera so I just checked the trail camera to see if we had anything coming in here and what we do have is about 2,000 pictures of the wind blowing apparently because what it's doing is it's catching the trees right behind you blowing and it's triggering it all the time. So I now have to go through this, delete 2,000 pictures because I set it up wrong. Okay guys, well I'm going to finish getting some more of these cameras set up in locations that I think might entice animals to come in or possibly some people. So I'm going to continue on with my day and then I need to get back to cutting a bunch of brush. I hope that these tips may have helped you guys out. I will also put a link... I'll also put a link to uh, some of my favorite cameras in the description below. You guys can go ahead and check those out. I don't always buy expensive cameras. I look at trigger speed. I look at review, mostly looking for trigger speed reviews. Uh, and then I will also get a bunch of cheap cameras as well because the cheap cameras nowadays do the trick. So uh, pretty good technology, some pretty decent quality, and I will not have to worry about breaking the bank doing it. Thanks for watching guys, we really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button on your way out and happy hunting.